Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do today, kind of how to transition through this, is um, I'm going to take you to our uh, checklist um, that we have. Um, we've got these budgeting scenario steps out there in our documentation and kind of take you through that and through a test instance so you can see um, <clears throat> how to go in and make adjustments for the current year and also how to go in and update amounts for the next fiscal year. So um, I'm in the budgeting chapter right now. And in here, we have a table showing the two different options, creating scenarios and the proposed amounts grid. So those are the two main components of budgeting. So the scenarios is where you're going to be going in and creating a scenario for the year. So if a treasurer is wanting to create a new scenario for the new fiscal year, they can create a scenario in there with several budgeting sheets within there, uh, one for high school, one for elementary, one for junior high, however they wanna make their sheets, all underneath that one scenario. And then basically once they get the amounts in there that they want, they can then go in and promote that scenario to the proposed amounts grid. And so this proposed amounts area then is like a working area, like a workspace where they can go in and tweak anything in there, make some adjustments maybe to some of those amounts. And once that's uh, set in place then and the amounts look good, then they can go in and apply those amounts as next year proposed amounts on the accounts. So if you then look at a budget account after that, you'll see that next year proposed amounts on, on that account. Um, so that's basically how that works with next year proposed. And with adjustments, um, they've already put in their fiscal year 22 adjustments, or I'm sorry, their fiscal year 22 um, amounts. And so here they are near the end of the year, and they need to make adjustments to those existing amounts. We also have a uh, way to go in and do that and just update existing expendable figures with whatever the new amounts are. So I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna start with doing adjustments for fiscal year 22. And then once we go through that, then I'll go in and explain how to do next year proposed amounts for fiscal year 23. And so, like I said, we have uh, two different uh, checklists here. So we have one for uh, next year proposed, and we have another one here for making adjustments in the current fiscal year. So that's where I'm going to go first. And this is something that you guys can um, download, um, go in and pull it in into a Word document, make any tweaks, whatever you need in order to create your own custom checklist for your districts. Um, but this kind of goes through exactly the different options and steps that you need in order to update existing amounts. So um, you can't just go into an account, a budget, a budget account, an expenditure account, and go in and modify the adjustments field. Won't let you do that. So you need to go in here and make those adjustments. And so, um, I'm going to kind of take you through this checklist so you get a bit more comfortable with what it's talking about here. So it already um, says at the top here what I've already explained what a scenario is versus um, proposed amounts. So, and we will get into those here in a little bit more detail. Um, but in there, you know, like I said, you can create uh, an adjustment scenario. So, um, so if I'm gonna go into my actual instance here and I'm gonna to go to budgeting and I'm gonna to go to the scenarios option. <clears throat> and here's where you're going to see some scenarios that have already been created, okay? And so in here, I do have an adjustment scenario and you can see that it is for fiscal year 22, which is the current fiscal year that I'm in. And then I also have a budget 2022 scenario. That's the original one that was done last fall to actually load my initial budget amounts. 
And so now I want to make some changes to some existing ones. So you could go in and edit your original budget spreadsheet if you wanted to. Um, that may take a little work just because um, if they've done all accounts and you only want to update the cafeteria fund, um, it might be easier just to create a separate scenario just for your adjustments for the cafeteria fund. And so that's what I did here is created this adjustment scenario. And so, um, and that's basically going back to these steps here is where it kind of gets started on what you need to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, it basically goes through the, and explains all the different features. And that's what I'm gonna talk about, but I'm gonna show you how to do that on the actual grid here. And so in here to create, um, and you know, I already said that I have um, a scenario out here, um, but in order to create a new one, I can click on create and it's gonna come up with um, some prompts. So if I, um, let's say my existing adjustments was just cafeteria funds, and now I wanna create one for something different, I could go in, and start entering uh, a title for that. So, and then I can add a description and that will show up on the grid. Uh, the fiscal year that I want, well, this would be really for 2022. I still wanna, I wanna make adjustments in 2022. And at that point then I can go in and create budgeting sheets <clears throat> within this scenario. And I could have multiple ones. And we really recommend that they try to keep one, you know, scenario for all the changes that they need to make. All those changes can be in all of those different budgeting sheets within that scenario. So if they're going out and creating these spreadsheets and sending them out to supervisors and stuff, and so they've got one for the transportation supervisor, the one for the cafeteria, high school principal, elementary principal, they can have separate spreadsheets within this scenario, one for each. And then you've got them all, they've got them all underneath one scenario. So once they go in, you know, farm those spreadsheets out to those people, they enter in the amounts, load them back in here, um, review it, everything looks good they can basically then take this scenario and promote it to the proposed amounts grid. So all of those, um, you know, transportation cafeteria principles, uh, spreadsheets will all get loaded into that proposed amounts grid. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to cancel out of here and show you the one that I already created. I'm going to go ahead and view it. And so here's my adjustment scenario that I've made. And so I have created one for cafeteria accounts. So I've got a budgeting sheet for that. And I also have one for the general fund. So those are my two spreadsheets that are within the scenario. So I did my budgets last fall, but you know I'm going in and I wanna make some adjustments, but only to these two funds. So it's probably easier, like I said, just to create another scenario um, with just your adjustment figures. And then I'll show you how you can go in and apply those. So what I'm gonna do is edit this. So we can talk about all the different options. You notice how it made all of those um, active. So we can go in and make changes. So obviously if I had another spreadsheet or what we call budgeting sheet that I wanted to add to this scenario, I could go ahead and click on create and it will um, pull this up here and it will create this budgeting sheet window here. And here is where I can get pretty detailed as to what I wanna include um, on my spreadsheet and what I wanna filter um, on my spreadsheet. And so the select properties, by default, the spreadsheet includes all of these properties here, which when you think about it, it's the um, account code, the account description, 
the prior year expendable and expended amounts, um, the current year expendable and expended, encumbrances and fiscal year to date unencumbrance. Those are the default settings. Now, if you're wanting to create, I'm gonna slide this over here a little bit. So I created one for the cafeteria and I created one for the general accounts. If I wanted to go in and create a separate one for 200 funds, um, I could do that. And so what I'm going to do is I need to first um, decide if I wanna add or remove any properties on my spreadsheet. Um, all it really cares about is the proposed amount field when it's loading the amounts in. But if you, you know, your treasurer wants to see something more or remove things, they can. So if I'm like, you know, I probably want, um, I know I've got the prior year, but maybe I want to see, let me look here, two years worth of expended. I can add that to here and maybe three years. So I want to go back three years and see what the expended amounts were from three years ago, two years ago, and last year. So, and then I, I think I can move these around to um, and adjust them. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to uh, add those. And let's say I really don't care about the encumbrance and the unencumbered. So I'm just going to remove those. So this is what's going to show up on my spreadsheet. Um, but again, if I don't uh, select any filters, it's going to include all accounts. So I want to go to the configure filters tab. And I want to say, if I go underneath code, which is my codes, my co code dimensions, I can click on that and say fund equals 200. And it will include just my 200 funds. I'll give you a couple other examples. I'm gonna remove that. Let's say um, this is an example of, I just want all the transportation accounts. Well, those are all within the general fund maybe. Um, and so, or maybe some are, you know, my 2800s are in other funds as well. I could do a filter on just function. And then I think I can do, I think it's like, and then I can do 28 with the percent signs. And if you kind of go, you know, look, remember what you have to do with creating um, filters for reports, it's, it's just like, uh, it's similar to that in here. So here's where I can say my function um, contains the 2,800. And so what's gonna happen is when I create this spreadsheet, it's just gonna include those 2,800 function codes, whether it's 001 general fund, whether it's you know, 010, whatever. So it's gonna include those. Um, I'm gonna go back to my 200s here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say fund equals 200. And then another thing too is I just want active accounts. Um, right now it's gonna pull active and active. So if I'm obviously, I don't wanna budget against those, against those inactive accounts. So I'm gonna make sure that active equals true. And I think that's it. So I've got my filters. I've got the properties I wanna show up on the spreadsheet. Now I have to name this budgeting sheet. So I'm going to say, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it's going to tell me that you're creating a budgeting sheet and it may take a little bit. So I'm going to click on create. And what's going to happen then once it's done, I will get this message stating that it's been um, uh, it's been uh, created successfully. I click off of that. And now I have an additional spreadsheet in here. So that's how you create a budgeting spreadsheet. Any questions about the creation of a spreadsheet? Okay, I don't see anything in chat. Um, I wanna talk now about what happens then after you create these spreadsheets, because right now all we've done is created the accounts, but we haven't added any amounts to them yet. So I haven't added my adjusted amounts yet. And so if I go and edit this cafeteria one, 
it's going to bring the spreadsheet up with all of the properties that I included in that spreadsheet. And then I can go in and um, add my amounts. Now, it's going to default um, with a column at the end that um, states PA 2022 or PA 2023. Um, and so the PA stands for proposed amounts. So these are adjustments that I wanna make in 22. So I have to make sure that that column header says PA hyphen 2022. And then from there, I can go in and start adding my um, amounts in that column. So, you know, just we have a couple examples here of three amounts that are already added. Now, when it comes to adjusted amounts, so let's say right now in this first account, I have a thousand dollars in there. Okay, that's my um, current expendable amount. If I want to go in and change this uh, to 500, what's going to happen then? is it is not going to add $500 onto that. Whatever I put in this field is going to be the new um, expendable figure. So it's adjusting it. And so if I put in 500 here, when I actually go in and apply these amounts, it's going to adjust it on the adjustments field on the account as a negative $500. So that $1,000 initial amount that I had minus the $500 adjustment will then give me a new expendable figure of $500. You guys have any questions about that? So you want to enter in your desired expendable figure in here. So once I go in and take a look at this account afterwards, the 500 is what I wanna see as my expendable um, figure for the fiscal year. Okay. And obviously in here, I can create a formula in order to um, similar, and I think we have that documented in the documentation. I'm gonna go back up to the budgeting steps here. If we don't, I'll add it. But we got a way that you can go in and um, do like a percentage. So for adjustments, you're probably not going to do that. But for next fiscal year proposed, if you wanted to go in and make um, the expendable amount, you want to increase that by, let's say, 3% and make that the new next year proposed amounts. Uh, we do have it documented where you can do a formula up here in this area, and it will allow you then to go in and um, create a formula saying take the expendable amount M2 times, I think, 1.03, and then um, that'll populate that up that new amount in here, and then you can just drag that down. So that's one way to edit it in this existing spreadsheet. If you're like, eh, I'd rather do that in Excel, that's great. You don't have to put in the amounts here. You can go in, and I'm gonna show you that. So I'm gonna cancel out of here. You can use this option right here to take this spreadsheet without any amounts in it yet. It's got the account code. It's got you know all of the you know stored amounts, but it doesn't have any proposed amounts yet you can take that and download it and it'll create a XLS formatted spreadsheet and even tells you that here. And it's going to, you know, you can download it, then you can upload it into Excel and you can enter in your proposed amounts there with whatever formulas you want to use. So you don't have to do it within this edit option. Uh, once you know this the spreadsheet is created, you know, you created it. Instead of going in here to making those changes, you can go ahead and download it here, pull it into Excel, make the changes, and then you have this upload option, which will allow you then to upload that spreadsheet back into this scenario. Any questions about that part? 
So we kind of covered the edit one where you can go in and actually edit the existing spreadsheet in here. You can download it to edit it in Excel. Once you're done editing it in Excel, you can upload it back in. And then we've got this regenerate sheet option. And so if I click on this, it's going to take me back into that sheet like I'm in the create option again. And here's where I can go in and add or, or remove things in here. And when I do that, then uh, what it's going to do is it's going to save those changes I made to that existing spreadsheet. One little um, thing to um, make note of this, though, is if I went in <clears throat> and made some changes in here and I had proposed amounts in that spreadsheet already, already they will be wiped away. So you would have to re-enter those. The reason you would want to use this is let's say um, you had a spreadsheet that you used um, last fall and you're wanting to go in now and make some changes to it. And so you're going in and you're like, you know, um, it's my uh, 200 funds. And so um, I have added some 200 funds since last fall. Well, what I can do is use that regenerate option and it will go out there and um, find any of those 200 funds that have been added in there already because I've already got that filter in place. I should use oh, oh since, since I'm talking about cafeteria, I'm sorry. So, you know, I did my, my cafeteria budget last fall. Since then, I've added several accounts. So right now, um, this existing spreadsheet does not contain those new 006 accounts that I created. By going in and using the regenerate, it's going to regenerate that spreadsheet and include those other 006 funds because of my filter here. Okay. And if I wanted to go in and add or remove some properties, I can do that as well. And those will be removed. But once I do that, though, um, and I go ahead and save this, it will go out there and remove those proposed amounts um, on that spreadsheet. These will be wiped away. So when you think about, um, this is probably something you would be using more often during when you're maybe, let's say, um, doing the next year proposed. If I cloned my 2022 scenario, and you can do that in here. Let's see this. I can go in and take my existing uh, 2022 spreadsheet and I can clone that. And it's going to take all of these budgeting sheets in there. And I'm going to create the, a 2023 spreadsheet out of that. Well, right now, when I go then and look at that 2023 spreadsheet, it is only going to contain the accounts from those 2022 budgeting sheets. So if I added some accounts for these particular spreadsheets since then, I can use that regenerate option to go out there and regenerate and refresh those spreadsheets to include those new accounts. But obviously when I do that too, the proposed amounts are going to get cleared out because they're 22 amounts. I'm now in 23, they're gonna be different. So um, then you know, you're going to be going in then and either adding them by editing the spreadsheet or like I said, using the download to move it into Excel, make the changes, load it back in. So that's what that regenerate basically does, is it basically allows you to refresh whatever filters and stuff you have and include any new accounts and stuff like that that you've done since the last time you used that budgeting sheet. Okay, so now I've got back into my adjustments one. 
So I've got my cafeteria funds, I've got my general funds, and I have student activity funds in here. And so, um, like I said, I have to make sure that they all have my, they all have proposed amounts in them. So I'm going to go back and edit and just make sure. So if I go into general fund here, and so right now they're all showing zeros. So I would need to go in and make all the changes in here, um, either, like I said, in here or pull it into Excel, add all my proposed amounts. I wanna make sure that it says PA 2022 because I'm in fiscal year 22. Um, I make all of those updates and then I accept the changes and I close out. Same thing with the student activities here. I'm gonna pull that up. So as you can see, all my 200 funds are in here now. And you'll notice by default, it says 2023. I don't want 2023, I want 22 because I'm making adjustments to my current. And then I'm just gonna go in and start entering some amounts here. Just drag it down. It's just gonna add that same amount to all of these. And these will become my new expendable figures. So I'm going to go ahead and click on accept. And again, if I wanted to go back into the cafeteria and add some more, I know I got a hodgepodge of stuff here, but I just kind of want to show you what happens then. And so I've got these three budgeting sheets within this scenario. Looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And so at this point, I'm going to go back to my budgeting steps here. You know, we kind of just talked about the grid and what you're seeing. And this talks more about uploading, where, like I said, you can download one of those spreadsheets, make a change in Excel, and upload it in. We also have in here um, where if you're not going to use the spreadsheets at all that you created in the budget scenario, you, you want to use spreadsheets in Excel and just upload those in instead. We have two um, files out here, uh, JSON files out here, a budgeting spreadsheet and a revenue spreadsheet, where you can um, download these, enter in your information, and then you can use... I'm going to go back into my adjustments here. The upload option in here to upload that spreadsheet spreadsheet into this um, scenario. So at this point, I've completed my scenario. And so all it's doing right now is just sitting in the scenario option. It's nowhere else. So now I got to take that information and I've got to apply or promote it into my proposed amounts grid. So I'm going to go into proposed amounts. I have to go back up to the budgeting menu to get there. And right now, it has some data in here from the last time I did, um, I promoted some um, accounts. So these could be left over from last fall. Um, and so um, it's just gonna contain all of those in here. And at this point, when I promote my adjustments um, scenario, it's going to remove all of those in here and replace them with what's in, in, in my adjustment scenario. So these are all going to go away. So that's one thing to definitely keep in mind. I, I think I've told this story before, but one of our first districts, I was sitting there with the treasurer and I was, and that's where, you know, I was still learning the scenarios. And so I'm like, yeah, let's create a scenario for your budgets for fiscal year 20. And then let's create a scenario for your revenue amounts for fiscal year 20. And so we did the budget ones, we loaded them in, so it had all of his budget accounts here, looked great. And um, then, you know, and they were in here 
And then we went in and said, well, let's go update your and load your um, revenue scenario in here. And so when we did that and, you know, promoted it, all of his budget amounts in here were gone. And I'm like, ah, oh. and then that's when I realized, oh, what we should have done was created a budgeting worksheet and a revenue worksheet within one scenario. So we had the budgeting worksheet, the revenue, and then he could have promoted that entire scenario and this would have populated with his budget and revenue accounts. So um, I just wouldn't recommend getting into the habit of creating multiple scenarios. You really wanna create multiple budgeting sheets within a scenario. Now in our example here, if I go back, you know, I said at the beginning that if you're doing adjustments, I could go into my budgeting 2022 and make changes there. But if there are only specific things that I want to affect, I am going to create a new scenario and just make those adjustments. <clears throat> These are budgeted amounts, even though they are setting in the proposed amounts grid, um, were applied last fall. So they're already on the accounts. So um, I know people have asked, well, once I go in and apply these and they get updated on the accounts, can't these go away? Well, no, this is a workspace. <laughs> this is a place, a working place where um, you can go in because I know we have people that say, I wanna leave them in here because if I wanna go in and make some changes. I know these all say zero. Let's pretend there's amounts in here. If I wanted to go in and say, you know what, I'm going to go in and make changes to some of these. And then I want to apply just, you know, those, you know, and, and I want to apply these, they can't. Um, so it's, it's more just of a working grid. And, you know, just one thing to be aware of when you go in to apply, it is going to apply everything that's in this grid. Um, this checkbox is for deleting. So this is kind of a maintenance box where it allows you to go in, select specific things and delete them. So, um, so like I said, this is the stuff that was left over from last fall. And so I've got, so these were all my, you know, original proposed amounts for fiscal year 22 that I did back in September. Now I want to go in and do adjustments just to some accounts. So once, like I said, I go in and I promote that budgeting scenario, these are going to go away. So you'll notice these are all just general fund. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my scenarios here. And it's the adjustments one that I want to promote. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on promote scenario. And it gives me this disclaimer and you know, the district should be reading this to make sure they understand what's going on. Promotion will replace existing proposed amounts for the fiscal year related to the scenario. Meaning it's going to replace what's on the proposed amounts grid, totally wipe it out. And whatever's in this scenario is going to be promoted. Are you sure you wanna promote the entries in this scenario? I sure do. And so that may take a little bit, but when we go in then and look at the proposed amounts grid, we should have the general fund, the cafeteria and the 200 um, accounts in there. Any questions while this is getting loaded? So at this point, it says that the promotion was successful. It's not going to change anything in my scenarios right here. It's still there. But now when I go back in and go to proposed amounts, I'm going to have my 001. So because that was still part of it, if I keep scrolling down, probably should have filtered the general fund a little bit more. <laughs> if I move down here, eventually I'll get to the uh, 200s and the 300s here.
There we go, and the 006s. So here are my 006s. I'm sorry, and just 200s. I didn't have 300s. And so you'll see too that all the amounts are listed here as well. Remember when I went into the 200 um, budgeting sheet um, and I applied all of those and I entered in all of those amounts and kind of dr drug it down. So all of those are in here now. My um, general fund spreadsheet did not have any amounts in it. So sorry about that. I could just easily go back in, make those changes in the uh, scenario and go ahead and promote it again. And it would wipe these out and overwrite it. So. so now these are all sitting in here and you'll notice too that I can do um, multiple years. I can store multiple years worth of proposed amounts in here. And so I know I've just been focusing on budget amounts, but I can also do um, revenue amounts in here too. Um, and that depends on when I created those spreadsheets. Um, if I selected either budget amounts or revenue amounts, my three spreadsheets in that scenario were all budget related. I didn't have any revenue. Now, if I did, um, then those would get loaded on the revenue side here as well. And so these are all obviously fiscal year 22 information. So whatever I have in this proposed field, um, or I'm sorry, in this amount field, and I'm going to do adjustments, it is going to go out there and replace whatever the current expendable amount is with this new amount that's sitting in here. So if there are specific things I want to remove in here, like I said, I can go in and if I wanted to select all and just you know, delete everything. I could use the checkbox up here and I could, this will eventually become active here um, and I can delete them all. Um, so I could do that. Or if there are just specific ones that I wanna do, then I can just go ahead and click delete and it will remove those. So at this point then, um, uh, another thing too is like I said, this is the working grid. You know, you can go ahead, you haven't done anything yet <clears throat> other than uploaded your adjustments into the proposed amounts grid. They haven't been applied to the accounts yet. So I'm at the point where I can keep working in here, make changes, and I can also, if I missed an account, I can click on create and I could go in and start filtering um, and looking for that specific account. So we've got this view button that allow you to do that. Um, I can um, you know, put in the fiscal year. So if I'm, you know, if I'm already working on my 23 stuff for my next year proposed, um, you know, I could, you know, specify that, you know, I could have that information in here based on what my fiscal year I have selected. And then I could up, you know, add that particular amount to that particular year for that particular account. So um, right now we just have 22 in here right now. And so at this point, you know, like I said, I can create some, I missed an account, I need to add it in here. I can delete an account. I can go in and edit one of these. So if I go into this first one, I'll have an amount, I need to correct the amount. I can click on save and it will update that. So like I said, this is a working, grid where you can go in and make a bunch of changes. So once my proposed amounts are good to go and I am ready to go in and make the adjustments for fiscal year 22. And if I go back to my budgeting steps here, this is where we talked about proposed amounts and what you can do in this working grid. My next step then is to go in and apply these adjusted amounts. And so how to do that is I don't need to check mark anything. Like I said, this check mark is basically for deleting. Um, and I got my fiscal year of 22. It's important. Make sure that that's selected. I'm going to click on apply and I'm going to get this menu. And so in here, um, it tells me this process will set temporary permanent initial budget or anticipated revenue amounts for the selected fiscal year. Well, what I'm really doing actually is an adjustment. So 
I'm basically adjusting existing amounts um, and replacing those expendable amounts with whatever is on my grid. So um, with that, with these, I always have to look at these options here. When I do an adjustment, um, what happens is, you know, these amounts are obviously different from what is currently on my budget amount. So like I said, if this first account looking like behind here in the gray, if this um, first account here was $50 right now, so it's currently my expendable amount is $50. I'm going in and making an adjustment for $100. I want that to be my new expendable figure. What's going to happen is it's going to go out there and it's going to make um, a positive adjustment of $50 on that account to equal the expendable amount of $100. So I'm gonna see my initial budget of 50. I'm gonna see a positive adjustment of 50 or if what if we wanna call it uh, an addition to equal my expendable amount of $100. That's what it's going to do. It will not change your initial budget figure. This is an adjustment. We aren't overriding initial budgets. We're making an adjustment. Um, on this account. So that's why I want to make sure that I've got adjustment there. And then we've got an option where we could update the gap original estimates if we wanted to. So that's, you know, totally up to the treasurer if they want to make those gap original amounts and change those to equal this new. And that depends on what they have set with, um, you know, their final, you know, budgets and what's been approved. So here we are in February, and those final uh, budgets were done in December, um, then they probably aren't going to update or check mark the update gap. They're probably going to leave that go. Um, so it just depends on you know, what the treasurer wants to do at that point. And so the effective date um, in here, you'll notice it's got a little like exclamation point here because it's not sure um, what you want to do with this. Um, so it has here um, for the effective date, it's going to automatically default to the first day of the fiscal year selected when you're doing temporary or permanent transaction types. Well, this is an adjustment type. When it comes to the adjustment type, you have the option of entering in an effective date. And that makes sense because that adjustment should not become effective until that month. I'm in January in here. And so if I want these to be effective for January, I can put in 01-01-2022. And then when I click on apply, what's going to happen then is it's going to go out there then and apply these amounts as the new expendable figures. I might take a little bit. Michelle, does the month uh, have to be open that you use for the effective date? Hmm. I think I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to. Um, I think it does, but I'm going to check on that. That's a good question. I also had another question. If you only have a few adjustments to make, can you um, just go to accounts, um, expenditure accounts, find your account, and then view it and add an adjustment there? Yes. Yes, okay. um, there's a budget adjustment option underneath the accounts. So if you just have a handful to do, you can do it there. Um, uh, you just can't make, you can't make um, the actual change on that adjustments field, but you can do a budget adjustment to make those changes, correct? Okay. And um, a third question that we've been asked multiple times, Will, is there any plans to allow you to add accounts through the budgeting scenarios 
Um, so like when a treasurer is um, doing their proposed amounts for next year and they know that they have to do their new year of federal grants, um, currently you have to have the accounts exist before they can be included in a um, budget scenario. They would like to be able to add accounts through the budget scenarios. Is that on the roadmap at all? I have to look into that. I'm not sure. We'll look to see if that's a, a feedback issue already. I want to say it is because I believe we asked that with our um, first district that we brought on. Okay. All right. I'll check it out. Is this Mary? Yes. Okay, I'll check it out, Mary, and I'll uh, let you guys know what I find out about that. Yeah, I'm not sure um, if that's something that we already have or if it's possibly on a roadmap for this year. So we'll look into that, see what we can find out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of accounts on there, so this might take a little bit. So while that's spinning, um, we'll go back to the budget uh, scenarios here. And like I said, you know, this um, checklist will provide all the details when you're doing adjustments. And it, down here, it talks about the apply adjustment, adjusted amounts. And um, we don't have anything in there. I'm looking to see if it says anything about the affected date. So it doesn't say you have to be in an open period to do that. So if I wanted to put in February as, you know, I'm in January right now, but I put a 2-1 date in the effective date, I know that those will not appear as adjustments until I'm in, until February is like my current period. Um, but yeah, I'll double check. And if that's something we need to add to the um, documentation, we will. Okay, so I kind of went through, um, you know, how to make those budget adjustments in the current fiscal year. Like I said, creating a new scenario, or you can use an existing one if you want to and make changes to it. And then once you've got that budgeting scenario done, you're going to promote it to the proposed amounts grid. Whatever's sitting in there right now is going to get replaced with your new uh, scenario accounts. And then that's the working space then, proposed amounts grid where you can make changes. And then from there, you're going to apply those. And whatever sitting in that grid is what is going to get applied. So it's definitely gonna go ahead and um, make all those based on that apply type that you selected. When we're talking about adjustments, obviously you're going to use the adjustments transaction type to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new session while that's cooking. And I'm going to talk about um, doing proposed amounts for the next fiscal year. And so I'm going to go back and um, we also have a worksheet here for next year proposed amounts. And so both of these um, worksheets are under our useful procedures, but we put it also in the budgeting chapter so you, can guys, you guys can go right to them right away. So this is where you are creating amounts for the next fiscal year. So you're not doing a uh, adjustments in 22, you're doing brand new amounts in 2023. And so again, um, you can take that um, here. You can take that 2022 scenario, and like I said, when I view it, I can click on clone, and it's going to clone whatever budgeting sheets that are in here. I click on that. It's going to pull everything from that into a new budgeting scenario. And then I can add or remove whatever budgeting uh, sheets that I want um, in that new scenario. 
it's probably taking a while because this is still thinking. Sorry. Well, what it looks like then. Mm, shouldn't have done that. If you clone from fiscal year 22, it won't pick up any new accounts added in 22 throughout the year though, will it? It won't unless, Andrew, you use that regenerate option. So after you clone it then, what you can do is you can go in, there we go, um, I'm back to where I was, and I'll, I'm cloning 22 into 23 here, and I go ahead and I save, you know, give it a name. This regenerate option right here, will then go out there and based on that filter, like, like I said, if I added new cafeteria accounts, my filter for this one is just 006. So if I go in and I've added some other 006 funds since last year um, and I use that regenerate, it's going to include them. So, and those will be included in there. So that's what I think the main purpose of this regenerate. And like I said, the regenerate will open up the window and allow you to make changes. But at the same time, those filters that you have out there, it'll go out there and say, okay, when I refresh this and I save this regenerate, it's going to go out there and find all 006 funds. So whatever I've had, you know, before and what I've added new, they're all going to get included in that budgeting sheet. So this is basically here I was cloning 22 to 23. This is what happens. They're all in here now. Um, and like I said, I can make changes. I can go in and I can, um, you know, like I said, refresh. And when I regenerate this and save that, I can then go into edit. And all of those accounts now for 006 fund are gonna be included in there. And then I can go in and edit and create the amounts for that. Um, if I wanted to go in and say, you know, this general fund budget one, I need to filter that because it's got 500,000 accounts on it. Um, I could go in and, you know, this edit is takes me to the spreadsheet. This regenerate opens up. Oh, I got to add stuff here. I'll just go into my 23 I already have here. So I've already cloned this, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, so this, you know, like I said, this will allow me to go in and open up the spreadsheet as is. So like I said, it's just gonna pull what I had from last year. If I had more accounts, 006 accounts that I've added, I wanna refresh it first. So it takes me in here. If I just want to save the sheet, great. Don't make any changes. It'll pull like any new 006 accounts in here. But if I wanted to go in and say, you know, I, you know, only want to add the active accounts. I have to go over to configure filter and make sure that this says active equals true. Then again, once I save this, then it's going to save the changes, refresh the data, and only include active accounts and all 006 accounts that I have on file right now. And then I can go in and edit those cafeteria accounts. And you'll notice that, you know, like I said, when you regenerate, it's wiping out whatever is in there and proposed um, back to zero. And that's okay because I've, I'm cloning from last year. I don't want the 22 stuff in here. I just went 23. I haven't done those yet. So now I'm going to go in and make those changes. So it does automatically default to 2023 in here, which is good because I'm thinking about next year. I'm still in 22, but I'm thinking of next year's. And here's where, like I said, I can do that in here and add the amounts or I can take this and download it. 
and pull it into Excel and add the amounts in there. And then once those are done, upload them back in. And now my proposed amounts for the new year are set. And same thing, I'm gonna just get rid of general fund ones. And then I've got my, I've got some general revenue ones in here too. That would be, if I looked at that right now, it's going to be all my revenue accounts for the general fund, aren't too many. And again, I do have some amounts in here already. Um, and then if I wanted to, again, add another one and here I can. So I can still clone what I had last year, the scenario into this one, but I can make changes to my new scenario and add additional things in here. And so once everything is set for 2023, I'm gonna go back to my cafeteria ones here. And I'm just gonna add some amounts again. And I'm gonna save that. And again, I'm gonna look at my general revenue. They all should say 2023, looks good. And you notice too in here, you can even remove things if you want to and clean it up while you're in here if you want to, but um, mostly you're gonna be doing that when you're actually in the spreadsheet and you can remove those properties from here. So everything looks good for this budgeting scenario for next year. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And at this point then, I'm still in 22, uh, but that's okay. I can apply my 23 uh, amounts for, you know, fiscal year 23 now. Um, and so, or, I'm sorry, I'm going to promote them. I still get hung up on those two. Um, so I'm gonna click on promote scenario. And again, it's telling me, hey, once you promote this, whatever is currently sitting out in your um, grid for 2023 um, in the proposed amounts get grid is going to be replaced with this, whatever is in this scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on promote. It tells me the promotion was successful. And now I'm gonna go out to that proposed amounts grid. And here's where that down arrow comes into play a little bit better. You know, I was in 23, so it's not gonna clear out my 22 stuff. It's gonna be because it's a different fiscal year. If I had something already in 2023, it would have cleared those out and replaced it with these. So clearly you can see here, once I'm in 23, it's only gonna pick the accounts that I had. And I had 006 budget accounts and I had revenue accounts for 23. So these are both, I didn't have any for 22. So, so they're in here, they're good to go for 2023. So now if I wanna go in and I'm ready to apply these, um, I can do that now. I don't have to wait until I'm in fiscal year 23 to do these. What's gonna happen is once I apply these, they're gonna show up in the next year proposed field on that account for now. Once I'm in July, and July is my current um, period, then those amounts are gonna show up in the initial budget and initial revenue field on the accounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, again, I'm in 23 here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and apply these. And now I'm looking at different options because I'm not doing adjustments. I'm doing temporary or permanents in here. And so to talk about these here, and they are documented as well. Um, so we've got the ability to go in and do a temporary. And so temporary, and if you leave the update gap field uh, checked, what that's going to do is these are gonna be considered 
temporary uh, figures for the entire fiscal year. It's where I have fiscal year checked, or, or I'm sorry, full year checked. So it's gonna go out there and make those temporaries. So obviously it's kind of like behind the scenes. What you're gonna see when you look at the account is that there's just you know $500 on the next year proposed amount. Um, but we do have some reports um, out there that will allow you, and it's in our public library section, that will allow you to see the difference is between the temporary, whether you made it temporary to begin with. You know, a treasurer might have done this real quick and she thought, did, were those temporaries or were those permanents that I did a month ago? Um, we have in our public uh, library, we have underneath the budgeting area, um, two uh, report definitions the budget transaction initial estimates and the revenue transaction initial estimates that will allow you to see when you made something initial temporary um, or if you made it um, initial permanent. And so there is a little example here. It's been a while since I've taken a look at this. And so here it's showing you um, when you generate that report for this particular account, it's saying um, that the type that you selected when you ran it was temporary initial. And so it's going to then tell you then that you also select selected full year. Um, so if you don't check mark full year, um, basically that is just an indication saying these are my temporary amounts, but they're probably gonna change due to maybe a levy that we're gonna have. Um, in the fall or in the spring or whatever. Um, so that's just a preference of the district. All it does is just keep track of that behind the scenes, but it doesn't make a difference when they're looking at the account. That makes sense. And so um, when I, if let's say I made temporaries and I decided then that for some reason I need to go back and make them permanent. Um, I would go back in and select the permanent option. Go back here. That's still right. Um, and um, I would make it a permanent option here. And you'll notice when we do permanent, they don't get an option to update the gap flag. It's going to update it. And then also the effective date is always going to be a full year and it's going to be from July 1st. And so if they go ahead and run that report after that, they're going to see a different type selected here. And it's going to say permanential. I don't know if I've got one on this. I don't. It's going to say permanential, I believe. And you're going to see the replaced column is going to be checked, meaning you took your temporary and replaced it with a permanent amount. So we had um, a few ITCs that, you know, their districts were struggling with what did they select in the first place? And you really can't see that on the account. So, and we didn't have like an existing report that did that. So that's where we created these public reports out here to show them, you know, this is what happened. And you'll notice that it also keep it also keeps track of when you selected the gap initial when you check mark that as well. Um, these reports do not include adjustment type transactions. They only include um, the initial amounts, whether it's temporary or permanent. So I've got temporary. And like I said, that changes things a little bit here. And then I've got the permanent option. Either way, they're going to show up on the account as uh, next year proposed. And once I make July of fiscal year 2023 current, then they're going to show as the initial amounts and obviously they'll be removed from the next year proposed fields.
So they can definitely do this ahead of time. You now, if they're working on these in May and June and want to get them in there so that once they roll over into July, they're already there, they can do that. Or they can do it after they're already in fiscal year 23. They can do all of this then and then go ahead and apply, promote or promote, apply them, and they'll immediately become their initial amounts for the current year. If they leave them as temporary for the year, is there really any impact besides the report? No. And I'm glad you asked this question, Nancy, because what we did back in one of the last year's newsletters, last fall, we had like an FAQ regarding this. So I'm going to go to our newsletters here. And I think it was last September, maybe. Aha, it was um, easing your budgeting conscious. We did an article on this and we had these same questions here. Um, you know, if I'm ready to apply permanents, can I somehow confirm I ran temporaries already originally? That's what we were talking about those reports and we even have them linked here, um, those public reports. How do I apply permanents? My temporaries were approved and no changes needed. Do I need to make them permanent on the system? You don't have to. And that's where we answer that here. Um, and then we just have some other miscellaneous budgeting Q and A's here for you guys. So, you know, if you guys are doing a budgeting session with your districts, you know, this spring, uh, refer them to this newsletter from last September. Um, you know, we were kind of focusing on um, adjustments and stuff like that at that point, but, um, um, but it does explain some of this stuff um, if, you know, and if you already did your temporaries, do you need to do permanent? So um, all of that is explained in this newsletter. Hey, Michelle. Yes. This is Andrew with Loco. Hey, can I ask a question? We have, um, I couldn't figure out how to type this. We have districts that want the revenue to show as permanent, like in like, may like they want to do a, they want to do like revenue way ahead of time and then they want to do budget like in september like I, I think it has something to do with their county auditor so can they can they have two scenarios one for budget one for revenue basically run the whole thing through on the revenue side and then run the whole thing through because if they don't touch each other there's no issue right it's only when you try to <coughs> they cancel each other out and propose. But if you don't care that they do that, it's it's cool. Right, right. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah. so as long as you go through the apply process and apply those revenue accounts, you know, and that's done, then yeah. Then once you do your new um, scenario, you know, it's gonna override whatever's sitting in here and they can go in and then apply that one, correct. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, think, we have one county. I don't know. I, I think it's, I mean, it's definitely different per county what the auditors want. And this one county, everybody wants to do it in this different way. Right. And it could be, you know, how their county auditor, you know, wants it and stuff. So it just, yeah, totally depends. Um, someone had a question here. Can you, I'm sure I didn't miss anything here. Can you talk about pros and cons of deleting proposed amounts once they are applied? So that's the ticket, just like I said here a little bit ago. Once they're applied, it's on the account. So it's just sitting out here in this proposed amounts field. And it totally depends on the district um, if they wanna leave it out here. Um, the con is, I forgot that I already did it. And I already applied them and I'm in here and I'm like, uh, do I need to do it again? Well, if they accidentally, you know, apply this again, and if they made changes or something, it would replace those. Um, leaving it out here just to leave it out here could be a con because people are like, I'm not sure what I did. So just let me after I apply, go in and totally, you know, select all these and delete them just so I know that for me as a treasurer is an indication I took care of this, I applied them, these are done. So that's kind of a con or a pro of like cleaning this up is um, because you don't, you aren't left with that confusion of, did I do anything with what's sitting here in the proposed amounts grid? 
So I don't know if that helps a little bit, Nancy, um, but you know, it just depends on, on the treasure. If they are, uh, I do them, you know, once a year in the fall and I do all of my accounts um, at once. So I have one scenario with both budget and revenue. Um, and I go ahead and uh, promote them and they're in this proposed amounts. And then I went ahead and applied them. And if I wanna go in and, um, you know, leave this open um, in order to maybe make changes or something like that, they can, but the thing is they can't select specific accounts to apply. It's going to be everything. So I don't really, it doesn't, it, is, it isn't harmful to leave this stuff out here. I think it's just the preference of the treasurer. And another thing too, to keep in mind is it does track different proposed grids based on the year. So that might get confusing too, because if they are in 22, and they're looking at 23 stuff and going, wait a minute, these aren't right. You know, it's because they're looking at the wrong year. So again, I think it's just total preference on what the treasurer wants to do. If they don't like to leave this out here because they think it looks messy and confusing for them, clear them out. Once you apply them, um, go back in here. And that's why we, you know, have that box up here at the top to mass delete. Okay. What else, what other questions do you guys have? I think I went through the different options of applying. So since you are um, taking a pause for questions here, I figured I would uh, chime in. I did go ahead and test with um, applying adjustments um, and with different dates with closed periods and the period does not have to be open. Um, so I confirmed that. So that's probably why we don't have it like specifically documented because like it doesn't have to be open is what I'm thinking. You know, if it was restricted, then we then we'd probably have it in there. Right. Um, I did also search for a Jira issue for having accounts created, um, you know, when loading into scenarios. And I, I didn't find an issue and I, and I didn't even necessarily find like a specific ticket. It looks like um, we've discussed like using spreadsheet imports uh you know so you could kind of like adapt that same spreadsheet to um you know use to load accounts but um yeah yeah i didn't i didn't find a specific jira issue but you know definitely like if um you want to send in a ticket we can review further and and always get a feedback issue made but uh oh, yeah perfect. that's my Thank update you, amanda okay. no problem <laughs> Let's see, I've got a couple other notes here and we might may have talked about some of these already. Um, see for districts. So obviously I think one question we have and it's probably not so much a question anymore since we're on wave nine, but um, if districts have next year proposed amount setting in classic right now and they are migrating over in wave nine, will those be imported to the proposed amounts grid? Yes, they will. So those will show up in there. Obviously there won't be any scenario for them because it can't create that. Um, but if you know you have classic next year proposed amount sitting in there and you know they migrate over next week, those will appear in the proposed amounts grid. Um, so next year proposed amounts, like I said before, are gonna show up on the amount when the figures are in the proposed amounts grid. So, you know, right now I see the 500 here. If I would go into core, or into core accounts and expenditures and look up this account, that $500 will show in the proposed amounts uh, field, uh, next year proposed field, because these are fiscal year 23 amounts. Um, and I think, I think that's, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that helps. Um, I think having the budget scenarios um, checklist here that we have, like the step-by-step -step procedure is going to be very helpful um, when going through this with your districts. You know, you can just basically go in here and start from, you know, creating the you know scenarios to 
you know, going to the proposed amounts and promoting them, you know, to applying them. It just goes through that whole thing, whether you're doing temporary or permanent or whether you're doing adjustments. It kind of explains all that in there. And then that one newsletter from last year too will help it with those FAQs that you're gonna get. So between those two, um, and then our, our actual budgeting documentation, you know, goes into detail and in all this too. So there's a lot of material that you guys can reference out there to help you with your budgeting training. Okay, um, just to kind of go back to our training page here. Um, we have, um, just to let you know, we, we're busy, busy with all these trainings. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to see me one more time next week. Um, we have uh, the JIRA custom dashboards training um, out there available for you guys to register for now. And so we're going to talk about customizing um, dashboards in JIRA for you guys, whether you want to filter on, you know, the USAS um, or payroll or inventory dashboards, um, or you want to filter on the service desk stuff. Uh, we're going to go through that next week. We're going to, I'm going to kind of show you how to start from scratch with your new account in JIRA. So that's next week. And then um, March, um, first weekend of March, we're gonna go through the releases. And uh, one thing that we are working on right now, um, and I think you know most of you probably know all this already, is that we're going to be doing a monthly recap session at the beginning of every month we're going to talk about the prior month's releases for payroll usas and inventory um, we, we were doing them quarterly and talking with um, the support team we you know felt like this probably should be a monthly session instead of a quarterly and make it easier and with that we also came up with um go back here this release recaps, and um, we're going to have this, um, we're gonna talk about this on the next uh, newsletter, which hopefully goes out today. Um, but uh, we're gonna talk about this release recap where what we're doing is we're going in and providing a recap for you guys on what happened in January. And so instead of you guys having to go to the release notes and payroll and then finding the release notes in USAS and in inventory and they're all three different areas of the wiki. We combine them all into one uh, document basically and we are listing uh, the release what happened that month and then we're going to go in and provide just uh, we're still tweaking this here. We're going to update all of this to give you an easy to describe you know what happened with that JIRA issue. Um, in, in uh, you know, non-technical terms. Um, and we're gonna put that stuff out here and explain what were the bug fixes from payroll in January? What were the improvements? What were the new features? Um, so we're gonna do that for each application here in inventory, what did we do? Um, and we're gonna provide that for every month. So that's gonna be out there uh, for you guys. Um, so, like I said, well, you know, we'll recap this. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to catch up first. And so that first training in March um, is going to cover January and February. And then from then on, we're just going to do the prior month. So those will always be that first uh, Friday um, of each month. We're going to review the prior month's um, enhancements. So, and I think that's it. So yes, if you haven't signed up for some of these sessions already, uh, please do so. Um, you know, those are out there. We, I think we have most of the links created. I know we have a few, probably mine, that haven't been created yet. Um, but yeah, we've got everything out here. So please feel free. And also too, when we're doing these sessions and we send you guys an evaluation and you guys, you know, have, you know, certain things that you would like to see covered for a future training, please mark that down in the evaluation. That kind of gives us a good you know listing of things to cover for the next year or maybe if it's something real crucial to squeeze in this year so again thanks everybody have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll see you guys next friday thanks